Hey guys, welcome back. And this time we're gonna use Simplify 3D and we're gonna create a temperature tower. And what this does is helps you calibrate the perfect temperature for the new material that you're gonna be introducing into your 3D printer. If you're printing at the right temperature, you'll get better results. I'll walk you through it. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, first of all, welcome to my YouTube channel where nerdy is cool. My name is Paul, and this is where I cover all the nerdy topics that interest me, mostly 3D printing, making props, building R2D2, Stormtrooper suits, Batman suits, you get the gist of it. So this time around, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a temperature tower, and this is something new that I've started doing in the last couple months. It used to be, I would ask my friends that have used a particular material and say, hey, you know, I bought this particular brand PLA, have you ever used it? If they said yes, I'd say, what was the, you know, what temperature range did you use? What gave you the best luck and best results? And sometimes I'd hit it on the head and experiment and, and get some decent results. Not very scientific. And then a couple of my friends said, you know, you really ought to do these temperature towers because they really nail it as far as your particular printer, your particular hardware, your particular heater, you know, everything. Every printer is a little bit different. So doing something like this will help you find out using a new material what the ideal temperature range would be based on the results of your print. So we're gonna do that. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a model. And the one that I like, I did a search on Thingiverse and I just did a search for a temp tower. And I came up with this one from, I think his name is uh, Stompy or Stempy or <laughs> I can't tell from the spelling here. But what he has, he has several temperature towers here. And if you look under the thing files, he has all kinds for PLA, PETG, ABS, etc. cetera. Uh, I recommend downloading the STL. He has a few in there that have G codes, but uh, I like to be in charge of my G code just to make sure. So what I did in this example is I grabbed this first one. I'm sorry, the second one, uh, this goes up to 220 degrees. And going into Simplify 3D, you can see here it is loaded up. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is now that we have this model here, is we need to figure out where we're gonna change our layers. As I zoom in here, you can see we've got 220, 215, 210, and et cetera, uh, working our way up. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is, first of all, I think I have this set for my AnyCubic Chiron, and what I wanna do is, now that I have this preview, I wanna pay close attention, okay, to where each one of these layers changes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this scroll bar all the way back here. And we know the first layer will be at 220 and I think right about there. Let's get it at like right about there. So we're gonna have our change in temperature at layer 41. So what I've done is on a piece of paper, I have written down the temperatures, 220, 215, 210, et cetera, all the way down. And what I'm notating is layer one, we're gonna do 220. And then, based on what I have on my screen here, on layer 41, we're gonna change to 215. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna scroll past 215. And let's get a little further, uh, right about there. So it looks like layer 72 will be 210. And I'm gonna do all of them, so if you wanna fast forward to the, uh, uh, later in the video, <laughs> feel free, but just to help everyone out, if we're doing this tutorial together, uh, I can make sure we have all the same numbers. And let's go back a step. So we're gonna change, this is gonna be for layer 107, and that will change to 205 degrees. And we're gonna do the same thing, scroll. This is where I'm finding out how good my mouse is. Okay, so we are at layer 140. So at layer 140, we will change to 200. And there goes 200. Okay, that looks about right. And on layer 174, we're gonna be changing to 195 degrees. And there is 195. Okay, and I'm sure there's an exact number. I think there's obviously uh, 41, so you could probably add 41 to all of these, or I'm just gonna drag this because I like doing it that way. 
Uh, so on layer 207, we're gonna go to 200 and, I'm sorry, layer 207, we're gonna go to 190 degrees. Let me zoom that out just a little back. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Let's go back a tick, right there. So layer 241 will be 185 degrees. And these are all Celsius, of course. And, oops, back you up a little bit here. Okay, and then 275, I'm a little scratch pad here, will be a 180. So that part is done. So what we're gonna do, we'll exit preview mode, and we're gonna go into our edit process settings. And again, this is for my Anycubic Chiron. I'm gonna get rid of the infill. We're not going to need it. Um, this is hollow anyway. Uh, I'm still gonna do my usual default settings that I have, uh, three bottom, four bottom, four top. Again, it won't matter because it's hollow on top. And over through temperature here, I have my regular bed temperature, but on the primary extruder, in the previous material that I've used before, I had these. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. So layer one, we know is going to be done at 220 degrees. And again, we're referring to our scratch pad here. We're gonna add another set point, And we're gonna remember that our next one is layer 41. And then over here, that will be 215. And again, if you wish to skip ahead to see, oops. So now we have layer 72, which is the next one on our sheet. And we need to change that to 2.0. And again, it's good to check frequently on your little scratch pad. So we'll go back to this guy here. Our next one is layer 107. And layer 107 will change to 205. After 107, we have layer 140, which will be 200, so that's gonna be fine just the way that is. Layer 174, that's going to drop the temperature to 195. Okay, and our next one is 207. That will be 190. Okay, uh, let's see, we just did 207, so our next one is 241. That will be 185. And our last one will be layer 275. And that layer will be printed at 180. So we're all set to go. All we have to do now is save the tool pass to disk, put it on the SD card, uh, place it on your printer. Uh, just like any other G code you would load, you just load it up and, and away you go. So when your print's done and it's cooled off and you can get it off the bed, uh, you're gonna find that the more you do this with different materials, the more interesting your results are going to be. Uh, for example, I have one material where, and I'll give you a close up of this one here, uh, where there was a few spots where it looked like it was really good, uh, and then there's a few that obviously had some issues with bridging. Uh, then I have uh, another one here. This is, a, I think this is the uh, Arion PLA, and it seems like uh, overall, it's pretty much good at any temperature. So every now and then, you're gonna encounter these materials that whatever temperature you give it, it's gonna print just fine. But as you look closely, you'll see a few little defects in the bridging, or you may notice um, you know, when you look at the top of the print or the sides of the print here. Uh, the big thing you're looking at, or that I look at in mine, is I'm looking at the bridging, and I'm also looking at how well it's doing the uh, little triangle here on the supports on each side and uh, that gives you kind of a rough guesstimate of what the best temperatures are. For example, uh, on this blue one right here, it looks to me like 200 is just right. And then on this uh, black one that I have over here, uh, I had some issues as I went hotter. I had a little bit at 190 and 195. So uh, I believe on this one, I found that uh, uh, 205 or 210 uh, were kind of the sweet spots uh, for these two particular materials. So kind of a short video this time. I just wanted to give you guys a quick tip on how to calibrate your materials coming in. 
Uh, I know for me, when I receive new materials, I do the temperature tower. Once I find the sweet spot, then I start doing extrusion multiplier cubes to find out where my extrusion rate should be. We'll do that in another video. But for now, uh, that's how to go through and simplify 3D and make those temperature changes at certain layers based on that particular model. There are others you can try it on Thingiverse. Let me know if you find one that's better or easier to use or has more interesting features. But uh, I will leave in the description down below the link to the Thingiverse file for this. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I thank you guys for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, hit the button down below and become one. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. Also, you can check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and on Twitter. And you can always see what I'm working on because I'm always throwing stuff on those social media outlets. So there, we're done. Have fun and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. And as they play with the toys. The thing is, is if you know how to go in there and make those temperature taint chain temperature <laughs> I can't. useful. I hope you try it out. Let me know in the description and then they come I'm <laughs> five. And we're back. Before the cat goes crazy again. Aha! do a temperature tower. I'm going to do this using Simplify 3D. And what we'll do is, and the freezer did that thing. Damn it.